Well, hello guys, here Mr. G with another video. This time we're going to be solving question 5 from the Eastern Cape question paper done in September 2023. But before we answer this question, subscribe to the channel so you can get all the notifications and videos I post on a regular basis. This question says a crate of meth 50 kg is at rest at point A, which is at the vertical height of 5 meters above the horizontal surface. The inclined surface make an angle theta with the horizontal as shown in the diagram below. When the crate is released, it slides from the incline and reaches point B at the bottom of the incline with a speed of 8 meters per second. The incline exerts a constant frictional force of 72 newtons on the crate while it slides from A to B. Now, we are going to read once more to get some data that is not in the picture. It's very easy to get the data on the picture. We have the height here it's 5 meters, it's given to you. The inclined surface make an angle theta, we don't know that value. And then we also know that the crate is being released. So the initial velocity here is equal to zero. That is quite important. Then the other important thing is that the velocity with which the ball reached point B, I'm going to call it velocity B, is equal to 8 meters per second. Or that is the speed of the uh, the speed of the block at that specific point. The incline is set a constant frictional force of 72 newtons. So the frictional force of the incline is equal to 72 newton. That is important. And we may, the frictional force will be pointing um, up the incline. So the frictional force will be in this direction. That is important to know as well. Okay, so this is more or less all the data that is given to us. We also have the displacement. Um, from B to C. Okay, now the question 5.1 says state the work energy theorem in what? And the theorem is quite simple, guy. It's one of the easiest theorem or, or definition you are going to have in the exam. All you have to say is that. So, all you have to say is that the work done by a net force is equal to the change in kinetic energy. This theorem, guys, can be written like this net work is equal to change in kinetic energy. This theorem is given to you, and if you don't remember, all you have to do is to go to the formulas that you get in the exams, like this one here, and then look for it. This one here is the work, work energy theorem. Is that one there? This one there is the work energy theorem, and for sure you have to apply it or it will ask you to stay in the exams. So, saying that, question 5.1 is already answered, you got two marks for that. Question 5.2 use the energy principles to calculate the angle theta. After passing point B, okay, okay, 5.2 use energy principles to calculate angle theta. So, in this question, they want us to get angle theta. Theta. Okay, and I want you to note something which I said in previous video. Most of the time when they ask you to stay a theorem, a law, a word, a definition at the front, it means that you can use it immediately afterwards. So in 5.2, we can actually use the work energy theorem. We can work from A to B, and that is what I'm going to do um, here at the bottom. I'm going to write here question, question 5.2. And then I'm going to answer this question here. Now, before we do that, let's quickly do the free body diagram. Because when we're working with energy, with work, it is important to know a few things here. The object is moving down, so this is going to be the positive direction. And the y-axis is going to be perpendicular to the x-axis. Remember, this is just for you to understand the work. In other fact, because we are working with work and eventually we're going to need the angles, this one here is going to be the displacement. This x is going to be the displacement. Remember, we need the angle between the displacement and the force. What forces are acting on that specific object there? Well, we have normal force. We have normal force. We have frictional force. And we have gravitational force. I am not going to get a weight. Let's write weight rather. We have weight. We don't have to break into components, but we need the angle between each force 
and the displacement. That is why I make the X axis to become the displacement. This one is the displacement and all I want is to get the angles here. For example, for the normal force, we have that the displacement is 90 degree. For the frictional force from the um, X, from the displacement to the frictional force, the angle is going to be 180 degree. All right. And then for the displacement and the gravitational force is this little angle here which I'm going to call alpha. I'm not going to call it theta because there is already a theta in the equation and I don't want to get confused. How do I get the theta? Guys, quite simple. All I have to do is saying this is 90 minus 90 degree minus the angle of inclination, which is this one here, and that is theta. So that is the angle between gravitational force and weight. Okay, so we are going to use now the work energy theorem as we mentioned already. So we're going to start on this side um, here, at the, on top here. We said that network, let's write it here properly, yes, the network is equal to change in kinetic energy. I have many videos on this topic that can help you to solve the, the work done um, in this way. Uh, using the work energy theorem or even the law of conservation of energy. Okay, now the word net, what forces we have? We have gravitational force or weight, we have normal and we have the frictional force. So the network is the addition of all of them. Guys, you can uh, calculate and separate them or you can calculate it here. Do know by now that the work done by normal force in this case is going to be zero. So in actual fact, we only have the work done by frictional force plus the work done by weight. And all that is equal to half mass final speed square minus half mass initial speed square. This is the change in kinetic energy. Now here, let's quickly recall how to calculate the work done by frictional force. The work done by frictional force, work done by frictional force is equal to frictional force multiplied by displacement, multiplied by the cosine between the displacement and the force, which we know it is 180 degrees. Okay, so this here, you may calculate it separated or you may substitute in there, it's entirely up to you. However, we're having a problem that we don't know how much is the displacement okay so we have here actually one unknown now how do we calculate the work done by weight and there are few ways of calculating that one you know let's do it here because it could be a little bit work done by weight we having two options to calculate this one one of them we're going to the definition of a work a work which is work done by weight will be equal to weight multiplied by the displacement multiplied by the cosine between the displacement and the force, which in this case was 90 minus theta. Okay, there we go. And the other option, the other option, let me just maybe try to use another color. The other option of calculating the work done by weight is the work done by the conservative force. Remember, the um, we weight is a conservative force. And this one is equal to minus change in potential energy. If we substitute this one here, will be a minus mass acceleration due to gravity, final height minus mass acceleration due to gravity, initial height. Now, what is the problem? If we go to the first option, which is this one here, we are going to have to unknow. We don't know the displacement, guys. We don't know the displacement and we don't know theta. So that will tell us or will give us now to unknow. Instead, if we use in this method, we have everything. So we are going to use this method to calculate the work done 
by weight and then we are going to let me erase that button and then we are going to substitute in the other equation so if we do this one we're done by the conservative force which is the only conservative force here is weight is going to be equal to minus and now we are going to substitute what we actually have here in the uh, data the mass is 50 50 let's let's do a double um, bracket here let's make this one square bracket small bracket and this one is 50 multiplied by 9,8 multiplied by the final height which is zero because it's right on the surface this is here at point b that will be the final height of the object okay so here minus 50 multiplied by 9,8 multiply by the initial height which is the height of the incline which is five meters this one is multiplied by five meters and i'm going to close the square bracket this one is just simple math when you do this calculation you will get that the work done by the conservative force or weight in this case is equal to positive 2450 joules now we have the work done by weight how we calculating the work done by frictional force well we cannot calculate it because we have one and no so that is what we're going to do we're going to substitute this one in that equation let me move this one a little bit there because of the uh, space let's move it like this so you can see what i'm doing here so now i am going to substitute what i have F work done by frictional force is frictional force which is 72 newton 72 newton multiplied by the displacement which i don't know multiplied by the cosine of 180 guys which is minus one plus the work done by weight which was calculated here at the bottom and i'm going to substitute it there this one is going to be 2450 and this is going to be equal to half mass which is 50 multiplied by the final speed which is eight meters per second square. So it's eight square, eight meters per second square, no, the square is the eight, eh? minus half multiplied by 50, multiplied by zero square, okay? Which is at the end zero. And with this one here, we may calculate the displacement. Once we have the displacement, we, we can use mathematics to calculate the angle, which is what we are going to do real fast here. So now this one is mathematics. I trust you can do all this calculation by yourself. I'm going to just write the answer. And here is a square, there we go. So you will get that the displacement is equal to um, 11,81 meters. This is the displacement. However, they don't ask for displacement. We're going to, we're going to go back here and this distance here, this distance here, all this one here is now known, which is equal to um, 11,81. Now we have the opposite side to the angle, which is this one. We have the hypotenuse. We may calculate theta, which is quite simple. Okay, we know that opposite side is sine of the angle. So you know that sine theta will be equal to opposite side, which is height divided by the displacement. And if you uh, substitute here, you go that theta is equal to sine of the negative one of, negative one of five divided by 11,81. And when you do that, you will get that theta is equal to 25,05 degree. And this is the answer for this question. From my point of view, is a very good question. I hope you are following the video so you know the steps I'm done here because it is a little bit, the space is not too big, okay? And I didn't want to go to another page. All right, now the next question say, after passing point B, the crate slides along a rough horizontal surface coming to rest at point C. So it means that eventually the object is going to be at rest here. The final speed that is also going to be equal to zero, which is 10 meter away from point B. So we know it's 10 meter away shown in the diagram. Draw a free body diagram to show the forces acting on the crate while it's light from B to C. So from B to C, let's do the free body diagram. This is question 5.3. And let's see what forces are acting there. The only forces acting this are friction. There's friction. 
D is normal force and D is weight. Those are the only three forces acting. Note, in the question, there are three marks, therefore there must be three forces. And it will be the four one mark per, per force, right? So this is the um, answer for 5.3. Note, weight can also be substituted by Fg, it's not a problem. Okay, and frictional force you can write with only one F if you if you want. It's not a big issue. It depends what you done at your school, at your specific school, what symbol your teacher used. So let's go to question 5.4. And this question say calculate the work done by the frictional force to bring the crate to rest. Once more, we are going to use the work energy theorem. This one is question 5.0. No, let me change that color. And let's use this one. This is 5.4, okay? So once more, we're going to use the work energy theorem. This is the free body diagram that we are going to use again in this question, okay? So those are the only three forces acting here. Now, let's quickly look at the angle. The displacement, and no, you cannot do this one in your drawing, eh? The displacement is this one here. That is the displacement. So the angles are 90 degree, and 90 degree. Therefore, neither the normal nor the weight do work. The displacement and the frictional force will have an angle equal to 180 degree. All right, nothing that I'm writing right now is part of the free body diagram. Please note that one. Eh? So now here we go, and we have here that the work done by the net force is equal to the change in kinetic energy. What is the only work that does force here, that does work here, the only force that does work is frictional force. However, if you want, you can write work done by normal plus the work done by frictional force plus the work done by weight. You don't have to. Half mass final speed square minus half mass initial speed square. And you know here now that the work done by normal force in this case is zero as well as the work done by weight because the angles are 90 degrees. So if you want here, you can say this one is zero, this one is zero. So we have that the work done by frictional force is equal to half Mass is 50 kilograms multiplied by the final speed is zero. Remember the object came to a standstill, zero square, minus half multiplied by 50, multiplied by the initial speed, which is the speed at the bottom of the ramp, which was, um, let me quickly look here, in my note is eight meters per second. Eight meters per second square. So when you calculate this one, you will get that the work done by the frictional force is equal to 1,600 negative. There's a negative force here. Let me just uh, fix this one quickly. Negative 1,600 euros. That is the answer for this question. I hope you understand. It's a very good question to practice work energy and uh, power. I really hope you understand. If you don't understand and you want to know something else, please be free to send me a message. I try to respond as fast as I can. And um, nothing to say. Subscribe to the channel. Thumb up. I'll see you next time. Mr. G here.